see the way the guy is even walking. Kai, waiter, what kind of a place is this? Ah, let's sit down. So, ah, thank God, though, at least this blind date is going to give me a husband, finally. Ah, that is true. Thank God, though. Kai. Yeah, afternoon. Um, what do you have? Okay, just get it for me. Get it for us. Yeah. Ta. Let's wait now. The person will be coming. Uh, no problem. But I was thinking maybe by the time I'll be here, he'll be there sitting down. But sure, maybe God knows best. I'm sure I'm looking okay. Am I looking beautiful? How do you see my shoe? Are you sure? Ah. Okay, oh, if you say so. Okay, let's wait now. The person will be coming. Okay, oh. What's this? What kind of nonsense is this? Imagine. What's this? Did you come and slap you again? Are you crazy? Eh? Can't you see the way I'm dressing? Eh? Do you know who wants to meet with me? Taking it in for what? What is this in my dress? What is of this? Do you know who I want to meet with? He's more better than you. Look at you. Poor thing. Look at slippers. Imagine. Lost something like you. What a fool. Imagine. Do you know who I want to meet with? He's far more better than you. You don't know. Don't let me watch you. Stop telling me to calm down. Stop telling me to calm down. Do you know how much I've been down? Oh my God. <laughs> You will not love me the way I am. Please stand up. Get up from my face. Sorry. Please, my friend, don't take it that way. Please. Can Even me, they pour me water. Please. Please. What are you trying to say? Please. Sorry so for it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Eh? Take it easy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Take eh? it easy. Sorry. Sorry, 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 my friend. Sorry. Because not much. Hey, 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 what's, what's going on? What's going on? Imagine that idiot, that fool. Calm down, calm down. Have Imagine. Your, have your seat. Sit down. Sit, down. sit down. Sit People down. Have, no, don't calm me down. Hello, you sit, sit down. You don't know how. Hello, hello. hello. Sit, sit down. Don't let it be you. Sit down, sit down. Don't let it be you. Sit down. Sit down. Don't let it be you. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Imagine that waiter. What happened? What happened? The water poured. The water poured the water. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. When you look now, calm down, Bella. Calm down. I'm talking to you. Just calm down. Just calm down. When you get to the house, you you can change. My boss. My boss is around. The man I told you about is around. Is around. And I I want you to be composed. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You'll get sacked. I'll make, see. No problem. No problem. Let the boss confess. I told you he's the owner of this hotel, right? He's a very rich man and he's around already. Please see. I want. Calm down, Bella. Hello, calm down. I'm talking to you. It's okay. Compose yourself now. When you get to the house, can change. Are you good? What? Are you good? I'm not good. So you should not come. Imagine. You, imagine. Wait, you're not ready. Bella, you're not ready. I said this man is a very rich man and you're behaving like this. Are you trying to put me into trouble? My boss. My boss, so Bella. You see me this way. Okay, okay, okay. Calm down. Do you know how much I've been praying to God to give me a husband? He's now God wants to give me a husband to blind and all this is happening I'm to the me. One that you're I'm tired of being single. Okay. Shut up! You don't know what it is for you to stay single. He, Shut up! It's okay, it's okay, Bella, it's okay. My boss is around. He will be here anytime soon. And the waiter will make sure he is sacked. No problem. Okay. Yeah, is he? Yeah, is he? Welcome, boss. Welcome, boss. Why are you calling him boss? Why are you calling him boss? He's the person that told me the what I told you. This is my boss. He he put his one. Boss, what? You you slapped my boss. Slapped. I'm very sorry. Ah. I'm very sorry, sir. Very sorry. Ah. What what did you do? Ah. Bella. Sir, sir, oh. please. She's not like this. She's not like this. Oh I don't my. know what. Oh. Well. <laughs> I'm so real. No, stand up, stand up. I'm so real. Stand up, stand up. Please, you can pour me plenty no, water no, no, as you no, can pour. Please. Up, up. 
please, I'm sorry. Please, you can pour me. Oh. You can slap me ten times. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please, I'm tired of being single. Hey, please. stand up, stand up, stand please, up. Please, I'm up, sorry. Stand up. Stand no, up. no, 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 no. Stand up no. now. Please, stand please, up. Please. Stand up. Stand up. Oh, stand I'm up. sorry. Sit down. I'm no. sorry. You came for a date. Please. You came for a date. Sit down. Oh, wow. What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> well, um, I must say um, you did a great job. Yeah. You slapped me twice. That's great. Well, I planned everything. I wanted to know the kind of woman a friend here brought for me. No, no, you did a very great it job. It was the devil's doing. I, I know. It was the Satan doing. Calm down. I'm I know. Sorry. I know. I'm a good person, no? I'm Just don't blame it on the devil. Please, I'm sorry. Oh, please, no. I'm a good person, no? Bad person, oh, please, oh, please, oh, ah, oh, yeah, stand up, stand up. Well, no, you, you guys should stand sorry, up. Oh. You guys should stand please up, stand up, stand up. Ah, please, stand up. I just okay, want to say okay. I do to you. You're forgiven, please. you're forgiven, you you're forgiven. You. Oh, my god, please. no, just tell me you will marry me. Please, stand I'm up, sorry. stand up. Please, I'm tired of being single. I know, please. I'm not a bad person, it's the Calm devil's down. doing, oh, please, oh, I'm sorry, oh, Calm I'm down. sorry. Oh. Well, um, Kachi, um, you know what I noticed? Um, I think I'll go with this one. Ah. Yeah. Oh. So, upon oh. everything that happened, she she was pleading and all of this. So, I think I'll go with this one. Um, you can do away with her. I, I've forgiven Chai. you. I've forgiven you. Chai. You can do away with her. Oh. Well, le uh, young lady, oh. it's like I'll take you to the altar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been praying for a husband. Bella. Oh, Chai. Very sorry, sir. Very sorry, ah, sir. So I'm still single again. Bella, <laughs> Bella. Look at me. Look at me. Oh. Have you seen what your temperament has caused? Oh. You cannot even control your anger for a second. Okay. See what you have done. After everything I put into this, I, to I spoke to my boss for about two weeks. Two weeks about you. I told him, even the things are me, I. I never saw about you. But I told I'm him that you're a very person. good person, that you are composed, that you can control your temperament, and still, you came and fed my hands like this. He said, I know, they said, I have left. You have, you have come out now. of so my body. Say so you have seen it. All wow. my efforts. I, Try. So I'm still so single so again. No. no, see, there's no problem. <laughs> there's no problem. There's always another time, okay? Mm. You're my friend. You're my you friend. Think so? Just calm down. Just you calm so? down. Just calm down. Try, but this see. person is well, Dio. See, oh, see, that was the speck no, of your man. No, that's your friend. Your that's, your, man. that's your best friend, Abi. That's mm. your friend. Then. Now you are she's taking your right, Abi. Chai. That is the thing that anger can cause. If you can only control your temperament for a bit, just just try, just try and control yourself. I regret just it. Try. I've regretted. Sky. No problem. No problem. I'm still single. There's always again. another time. Always I'm another not time. married. Just no. work on yourself. <laughs> work on yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where are you? Hey, come and carry this thing. Um, I hope we all learned a great lesson from the drama we just played. Um, we should always be careful. Number one, we should know the way we react, the way we act towards strangers. Because you don't know who is who. Don't be an angry bird over everything. We all saw what happened there. It was just a little cup of water. And she overreacted. And lastly, she still remained single. So my advice today, or the advice that was created here, is for us to control ourselves, control our angers and our emotions. Thank you. God bless you in Jesus' name.
when praises go up, God's glory comes down. Let's make welcome the sought out voices for the administration. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Are you clapping or you're scratching? Let God hear you. Put your hands together for the Lord. Is that how you're celebrating the King of Kings? Is that how you're celebrating Jehovah El Shaddai? Is that how you're celebrating the creator that was not created? Is that how you are creating the omnipotent God, the everlasting God, he that was and is and is to come? Is that how you are celebrating him? Let the Lord hear your voice. Let God hear your voice. Make some noise. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Father, I worship your faithfulness. I thank you for you are the king of kings. You are he that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ever ask, we ever think or ask of you. You are faithful, the God that called for those things that were not as though they were and they all came to reality. You are faithful. Thank you, the owner of the universe. Thank you, the God that created us all. Thank you, the creator that was not created. The pathway upon the Red Sea you are. Lord, thank you for the victory of your people. Be thou exalted tonight. Thank you for being in our midst. Thank you for the singles that you are about to settle. Thank you for your blessings in the life of your people. May you alone be highly exalted in the name of Jesus. Standing here today, I appreciate God for this rare privilege given to me by God's servants. I said, may the name of the Lord be blessed in Jesus' name. I thank God for my father who has given me this privilege, this platform to stand today to minister the word. Unto you, it is not my word, but the word of the Lord. And I know tonight the word will transform someone in the house in Jesus' name. Today, our topic is enforcing marital settlements. Enforcing marital settlement. Enforcing marital settlement. When we say to enforce, it means to ensure. To enforce means to ensure, to execute, to compel. Praise the Lord. What is settlement? This means a conclusive resolution of a matter. A conclusive resolution of a matter. Because it is the right of everyone truly serving God to be maritally settled. But behind every marriage that is not forthcoming at its time, there are concerns. Praise the Lord. What are the concerns that we're talking about tonight? That concern is delay. Two, disappointment. There are many singles that have encountered disappointment severally. Most times they will ask themselves questions, both male and female. They will ask themselves questions, why is it actually happening? At times they are best of people. Well charactered. Good. They are so nice. Everything. They have all it takes. But they will just see one thing or the other happening. At times they just see their marriages being delayed. And somebody will say it's because of his sin or because of her sin. Somebody will say one thing, you know, we are human. People will assume things. When people pass the time that they are supposed to achieve a particular thing, people begin to assume things. Some people begin to judge them, begin to say, what all manner? But tonight, I'm here to tell you that the reason for delay and disappointment, that's the concern in the life of so many singles out there, is not because of their fault, or because they have been wayward, or because they have done one thing wrong or the other. Praise the Lord. What are the causes of this delay and disappointment in marriage settlement? Faulty foundations. Mostly it's faulty foundation. What is faulty foundation? This is where our ancestors were neck deep into darkness. They were in serious romance with Satan and his cohorts. They bowed down to idols and worshipped strange gods, contrary to the law of God. 
please, as we look at that faulty foundation, let's see the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 5. Exodus 20, 1 through 5. And it reads, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Praise the Lord. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters underneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hates me. Praise the Lord. Most of our foundations, our ancestral parents, even some of our immediate parents that are yet to come to the knowledge of knowing God as their Lord and Savior, they have defaulted of these things. Most of them bow to strange gods. Most of them offer sacrifices. They do terrible things that, is, that contradicts the law of God. Praise the Lord. At this, as you can hear here, as you can hear what God is saying, God becomes very angry with us at this. You know, the Bible speaking says, Abraham paid tithes. Levi paid tithes while he was in the loins of Abraham. That is to say, if our ancestral parents go bowing low, go bowing down before strange gods, or giving ordinances, paying giving sacrifices to, all, to strange gods, we are equally doing the same. Because we are in their loins, or we were in their loins when they were carrying out these acts. Most of them were serving marine gods. Powers that we don't know, they are the works of their hands, graven images. They bow to trees. They carved stones and bow to them and believe so much in those things. And those things brings, brings causes upon us. Praise the Lord. Faulty foundation. That is what faulty foundation can do. Secondly, covenants. Evil covenants. What is covenant? This is an agreement that binds two people. Covenant is an agreement that binds two people. Praise the Lord. But in the spiritual sense, a covenant is more than a mere alliance. It is an agreement between a higher authority and a lesser being. And the superior lays down the condition to govern the covenants. The superior in the agreement, in that covenant, will lay down, will tell you, I am the one to be in charge of this covenant. So whatever comes out of that covenant is governed by the superior. Praise the Lord. And this superior can be God or Satan. Praise the almighty God. Let's look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2. And it reads, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Praise the Lord. That was God who went into covenant with the children of Israel. And he told them, God is now showing himself here as a superior. Then, seeing here, he is the one governing over the agreement of the covenant. He is the one governing over the Israelites, over the covenant that they entered into. He said, he gives them condition, if you will hearken diligently to my own terms. Likewise is what Satan does. That was what he did to our ancestral parents. He will give them conditions, and most of them, because of ignorance, they agree to it. They didn't think of us. They didn't care about their generations unborn. They only enter into this agreement via their own selfish interests. They are what they truly wanted. Some of them went for fame. Some went for power and all those things. Some went for wealth. And at that, they stake the destiny of the unborn generations. Praise the Lord. Evil covenants is governed by, the, by Satan, who will always attempt to thwart God's legitimate purpose. He twists God's good 
it twists God's good intervention and entices this man into covenant, covenant relationship with him. On the surface, things may look very promising and rosy, but in the end, this he strikes. He will present it on a platter of gold. He will make it look very simple and flashy. Satan will enter into a covenant with you and will tell you, I will do this, I will do that. He will make you feel that there's nothing there. He's not really going to hurt you. He will make it look very flashy and rosy. That's how he presents it at the first stage. So that you will fall in. Praise the Lord. And the consequences, the end, he will strike at the end. And the consequences affect the unborn generations. The covenant requirements can range from human to animal sacrifices, rituals, destinies of the entire generation, marriages, wombs, satanic worships, bondages, and all that. When Satan enters into covenant with a man, he will not tell you what he's going to do to you. He will only program it. And when his due time is, he will strike. He will now begin to give you reasons why you should sacrifice, do one thing or the other. And these sacrifices might be human beings. At times, maybe from the beginning, he will tell you you are going to be sacrificing chicken. You will just buy chicken from the market and just give me and have that end seat. But it's just a trick. When you enter for him, you will be shocked. He will now tell you, I need your first son. You will open your mouth. Wow, my first son? But this was not it. You didn't tell me about this. But before you know, because he will go after you, when once he tells you, this is what I want, he does not go back. He does not go back. He will force you to do it. And at the end, he will threaten you here and there. And if you do not know how to go back to God, you will now fall prey to him. And then, before you know, you will give your son and after that, it will now come for your daughter. After that, it will come for your wife or your, or, or your husband. After that, it will come for people until you clear off your whole generation. May that not be her portion in Jesus' name. That's how Satan does his own. Failure to meet the devil's condition result in sicknesses, disasters, wretchedness, mysterious death, and marital delay. Most of the marital delay is as a result of this covenants that our ancestral parents entered into. Another thing is therefore we must be able to connect the dots to know that Satan has no free gift and nothing of, et nothing of eternal interest. Satan does not have anything of eternal interest. And when you go into covenant with Satan, as he sees you at his doorstep, he does not have anything good for you. Satan does not love you. You are not like human being. He doesn't love anybody. So all he wants from you, and Satan will not tread his wickedness for nothing. When he tells you, I am giving you this, be rest assured that he will take more and more and more from you. He will train you. Satan is so wicked that he can't just give you anything free of charge. Praise the Lord. Another thing is stronghold. Another thing that brings marital delay, that is the concern of so many marital disappointment, delay, failures, and all that is stronghold. What is a stronghold? This is a strongly fortified defensive structure. It can be dungeon. It can be dungeon can be prison. It can be the agreement he entered into, and then he lay hands and said, "This is what I stand for, and I'm not shifting ground." The bondage he put the people stronghold. And every stronghold has a strong man. Stronghold is not just operated like that. It is a strong man over a stronghold. And who is a strong man? A strong man or a strong woman is Satan representative. He or she is the custodian of the family's record and register. And unluckily, so there are so many people Perhaps they have not been born in their villages. Perhaps they don't really know much about their family history. They don't know that these things were going on. Maybe most of them, their parents broke out and became Christians. And these students are now born to see themselves Christians. So they don't even know about the things of the past. But all of a sudden, they start seeing things falling apart. Many things happening, going wrong. They begin to ask themselves questions. I have been serving God all these years. My, I want to see my mother and my father serving God. 
We are serving God. We go to church. We are we serve in one department or the other. We do things in the church of God. Why is these things befalling us? It's because they do not know that it's a stronghold. Who has a strong, a strong man and a strong woman or a strong woman sitting over it? And this stronghold, this strong man or strong woman keeps the records of the family. You'll be so shocked that this strong man does not, I'm not seen you, I've not seen him or her physically before. But he knows you, she knows you. By the spiritual records of the family, he knows your name or she knows your name. She knows everything about you. You might be in America while he is in the village or while she is in the village, but he knows everything about you. Praise the Lord. And he belongs to satanic groups and is high in ranks than any member of the family background. Gender or age is irrelevant. It has nothing to do with this strong man or strong woman. A strong man, a strong woman can be a child of five years. But in the spirit realm, he's bigger and larger than every member of that family. Praise the Lord. It's our age has nothing to do with this position. And they are also referred to as rulers of darkness. You can see that in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. They are next in ranks to powers. And they take instructions from powers who also fall under principalities. They are human, but highly possessed. They are incarnate. That is to say, they are partly human and they are partly spirit. You see them as human beings, but in the realm of the spirit, they are partly spirit. They just walk like human, but they are partly spirit. Praise the Lord. Highly possessed. Highly demonic. Another thing is evil veils. What is evil veil? Evil veil is a covering that misrepresents and misinterprets an individual who is a victim. Press the Lord. Evil veil. You might not understand it, but there are people walking very beautiful people. Very beautiful if you see them. But they are going with veil. Once upon a time, I heard someone, a very beautiful lady. Very, very beautiful. Extremely beautiful. So one time, so far back, we were gisting. And she had to say, since I was, since I came up, came of age as a woman, no man has ever tell me, how do you do? No man, as in, has ever, let's say, has ever deceived me to say, I love you. Meanwhile, he's deceiving me. No man has looked at me twice on the road, no matter how ugly he is. I was like, as beautiful as you are, what, what are you saying? She says she don't know what is happening. But it is now that I really understand that perhaps she was going with an evil veil. There was a veil covering her beauty. There was a veil covering her, the real her. There was a veil making her inhuman. Perhaps the veil present her as animal before people. Or be present her as an old woman. Or present her to look very ugly. The veil misinterpret her. The veil misrepresent her. Praise the Lord. And she did not know what was really happening. She just cried, what is happening? I'm coming of age. And what is really actually happening to me, I do not understand. Praise the Lord. Whatever veil it is in the house tonight, the fire of the Lord will consume it to ashes. And everyone in this house will be set free. In the name of Jesus. Veil comes in diverse ways. There are veils that are cobwebs. It comes like cobwebs. Spiritual garments. At times, some of them are spiritual garments. You are just wearing a spiritual garment. And you do not know that you are wearing a spiritual garment. I once said, a woman of God told me something sometimes. I was interacting with her, she told me. There was a deliverance she handled. So we were discussing about it. She told me, when she was, this man she was handling deliverance for is a man of God. A servant of God, as in a side committed servant of God. But she was carrying a present. What was this present she was carrying? The present was the present of a native doctor. She goes with an attire of a native doctor. But yes, she was his, he was his servant of God. He goes with an, with, with an attire that he does not know that was misrepresenting him and was, was misinterpreted uh, interpreting, uh, interpreting him. Praise the Lord. He was just going doing the work of God. But everywhere he goes, 
What they see in the realm of the spirit was a native doctor. But he was a servant of God. And why was he passing through this? The faulty foundation of his fathers. And he was not aware of it. He didn't know that these things were happening. He didn't even know that his ancestral parents were native doctors. That they were demonic representatives. He didn't know. He came up, saw his father and mother. They were all worshipping God. But in the realm of the spirit, he was wearing the attire of native doctor. He was called, he was a native doctor in the realm of the spirit. He was a servant of God in the present, in the physical world. So at that, this attire, this veil was covering him, misinterpreting him, misrepresenting him everywhere he goes. At that, hindering his breakthroughs. Stopping things from happening in his life. Giving him disappointment and delaying him. Praise the Lord. Causing ministry to fail in his hands. He caused him to make serious mistakes that he wouldn't want to make. He do things he, wouldn't, he was not supposed to do. His foundation was dragging him. The veil was covering him. The veil was speaking very loud. It didn't mean he was not praying. He was praying. But the veil has voice. So he speaks. Praise the Lord. Please, but we'll be upstanding because we are going to be praying. We are going to be praying for these things. Many of us are going through these things. Many of us are asking questions as singles. We do not know what is actually happening. We are going to be praying. Please, maybe we be upstanding. As we are going to be praying, we are going to be praying for the faulty foundation. You are going to say, Father, show me mercy in any way. My ancestors struck my parents. We are romancing with the devil and these cohorts, and it's affecting me and my marital settlement. Show me mercy, Show me mercy and restore my, and marriage. restore my marriage in the name of in Jesus. Name of Jesus. Up, oh, let you heaven hear your voice. Yeah. Tell you God tonight uh, that you need your marital and settlement. What is it that the Father Foundation is doing to you? Say, Father, show me mercy in any way. My ancestors, all my parents, were romancing with the devil and his cohort. And this thing is affecting me. It's bringing delay in my life. It's causing me to pursue disappointment. I'm undecided. I'm having encounters I don't know about. Oh Lord, arise. Let mercy prevail over judgment. Let your voice be heard. Cause of because there is a cause. Whoever the power to God, I go to. Undecided. Outside God, they are undecided. Man, who's the boy? He said he will face it today. Oh, my leg, and all to the phone, even to the phone generation, they will pass to it. Maybe you are the fourth generation. Maybe you are the tenth generation. And you are a God in this in your life. I want you to lift your voice. Talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord. My right hand, my neck, 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 my neck,
Thank you, Lord. You're still praying. You're still praying. So every power, every power assigned, assigned and designed and designed against my marital settlement, against my marital settlement, backfire, backfire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Let Jesus God, Christ. Let God hear your voice. Every power assigned and designed against my marital settlement. Oh Lord, arise up. Let it backfire in the name of Jesus. 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 Let it backfire Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are going Lord. to pray against our family covenant. You are going to say, Father, Father every, covenant every covenant entered with the devil, entered with by, the my devil parents, by my by parents, my ancestors, and my ancestors that is frustrating me, that is frustrating and my marital settlement. Your, your time has expired. Your time has expired. Now, now. fire. Cut fire. In the name of Jesus. Cut fire. Lift your voice Cut fire. Cut fire. Je te pata. Let it together. Let it go. Je te pata. Let it go. Let the door, Thank you, Thank you, Lord. You are still praying. You are going to say every evil appointment. Every evil appointment. Summoning me. Summoning me into tragedy. Into tragedy. Calamity. Calamity. And shame. And shame. Scatter in the name Scatter of Jesus. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Let go together. Let go shadow. Let go together. Let go together. Summoning me into tragedy. By the blood of Jesus. Let go shadow. 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 Thank you Lord. to pray against the strong man. Say every strong man. Every strong staring man. Staring up evil. Staring up evil. And occupying my palace. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of and Jesus. The of and the power of the Holy Ghost. And the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the voice of prayer. 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 Let the Every strong man staring up evil against me, and occupying my palace. Oh, fire! Let the fire go together. Fire by fire. 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 Fire by fire
Say every of my goods. Every of my goods that is in the custody. That is in the custody of the strong man. Of the strong man. I recover you. I recover you. I recover you. I recover. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Recover all your goods. All your goods that the strong man has gathered. That the strong man has gathered for himself. Gather it for yourself. Gather it for your restoration. Every of my goods that is in the custody of the strong man. Father, I recover, I recover, I recover for restoration, I recover it, every single in the house tonight, I recover, I recover, we are going to pray against evil veil. Just say, Father, Father, every evil veil, every evil covering veil, me, covering and me, and turning my glory, and turning my glory into shame, into shame, cast fire, cast fire, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Let Jesus, your voice and pray. Let every pray evil veil covering my shame, every evil veil, let them cast fire by glory, fire, turning your glory into shame, turning into your honor, into the future, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let them hear your voice. I'm not there. I'm not there. Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? Talking to God. Are you saying something? Ah, but in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Of my brother into shame, turning our glory into shame, cast fire, backfire in the name of Jesus. Lacamalebo, Lazo Prema, Meko, Alekada, Alaba, Zaka, Palebo, Arunda, Bosata, Mako, Alekada, Alekada, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Please celebrate the Lord. Put those beautiful hands for the Lord. Praise the Lord. As you're sitting in the house, you've heard the message tonight. You've heard tonight's teaching. I don't know how you understand that teaching. I don't know what you understand about faulty foundation. I don't know what you understand about evil covenants. I don't know what you understand about evil veil. I don't know what you understand about satanic strongman and stronghold in your family. So as you're seated there, I know maybe something is running through your mind. If you have a question in the house, please, let's see your hand as you ask the question. Promise, Amboni, please, you're going to anchor for us. Please, if you have a question concerning our teaching tonight, please, let's see your hands. Just ask the question, let's clarify you. Maybe you have been wondering over certain things and you need clarity, please. We are here to answer you tonight. If I cannot, our father is in the house. He will help us out. Can we see a hand? That's to say we all understand what it is and why people pass through certain things. Why some people are suffering delay in their marriages. Is that what we are saying? You see, because of these things, so many people make terrible mistakes. You will see some women or a girl, you're into a relationship. And maybe perhaps you, you have agreed with this person. And you realize that this person is just making jest of you. For instance, I run into something that says a woman went visiting her man, and at that, she wanted going, and she didn't even go with any money, uh, transport. She just went there. And the man was like, okay, you're going, you now bought a taxi. Taxi man, 
dropped, dropped her at her destination. She says, I don't have any money on me to pay transport. And the man said, she said, you don't have the money. Give me my money. And all she does was, okay, I don't have money to give you. Can you sleep with me? And it was in an agreement. Her own boyfriend or whatever, the man she went to meet, agreed to it. And I wonder what relationship was that. Yet, this is someone who is looking for marital settlement. And you are playing around with someone and you're sticking by someone who will, who will cheapen you that much. Who will render your own ego useless. You can imagine. Those things might not be because she wants to do it. Contentions from the foundation. Covenants, strongholds, evil bells and all that. Because what on earth will make that kind of a thing, bring that kind of a thing to happen? I'm just bringing this so that you can latch up, enlarge your heart and begin to think of something. You might be confused why certain things are happening to some people and some good people. Most times, good people. Terrible things happen to good, very, very good people. And you will wonder, why should this kind of a thing happen to this kind of a person? Most times, it's not because of that person's error or whatever. It's as a result of challenges and consent from the background. Please, we have a brother there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, I have a question ask. to ask. Um, a parent, mother and father, who did not marry legally, can they sit and collect the bride price of the daughter? If yes, please, you throw more light. If it is no. Paraventure, a man sees that whom the parent did not marry proper and wants to get married to her. How do the man reconcile that particular issue, please? Praise the Lord. Those things happen every day. They were, there are many people that our ancient parents like that, most of them married like that. They just walk into marital, mar uh, just walk into themselves and things, they started having children and it was concluded that they are husband and wife. And at that, when it comes to this modern time, where their children are involved and somebody is coming forth, what happens in most cases like that is, the man will forgo the, the whatever he's collecting on his daughter's head to the, daughter, to the wife's family. Because I saw it happen sometimes ago. There was a woman like that. The husband did not marry her. So when it was time for marital settlement, and if somebody came out to marry the daughter, so the, family, the husband, the wife's family said, no, Uga, you will not collect, you did not give us. So the family of the woman now come, they came forth. And the man willingly handed over. But she, he stood. He was the one that collected the bride price, collected everything, but he handed it over to the family. Or in most cases, he has to go and settle them. He has to go and marry his wife legally before he collects the bride price. In most cases. Why some people will allow, it, will allow him to hand over it? Because maybe he does not even have. And there is no hope. So instead of delaying some other person, they will take this one. But the right thing is, let him go and marry the wife legally before he sits to collect another person's bride for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I have a question. Um, please, how do you um, explain this? I, am, I have, I know of somebody that Praise the Lord. Um, I have some that asked me a question that I cannot answer. Hello? Can you hear me? One, two. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So, um... There is this um, person I know, and yes, I kind of asked me a question, and I could not answer. Um, two couples trying to get married. Okay, the guy said he's ready for marriage, and he wants to get married to this girl. And this girl is like, she's not, she's not that she's not ready, but she wants the guy to give her time to arrange herself because she's in school and she's trying to gather up herself because she doesn't want to be a liability to this man. And then the man is like, I don't have time. 
I'm giving you three months. I want to get married in three months. And the girl is like, no, I don't want to get married in three months. You have to give me like this year to run out. Let me fix myself. Now, when the person came to me for like advice, I didn't know what to say. So I want you to advise me on what to give to this person back because in this girl's issue, the senior sister had the same similar issue. She had a boyfriend that wanted to marry her and she kept saying, I am not ready. I want to take care of my younger ones. I want to make money first before I get married. Finally, she didn't get married to the person. This person actually left her to marry another person. And it's the same thing with this other girl. The guy is like, and she's not married till now. And this other girl, the same siblings the guy wants to marry her and she's also saying the same thing like i'm not ready for marriage so please i don't know how to advise this person so i need more light on how to advise this person thank you praise the lord in that what i understand is you're telling me someone come someone came to marry her and she's like i don't want to be a liability to this man i want to gather myself first before i accept marrying him well in that case i think they should enter into let him talk, let her talk to the man if the man agrees to her terms fine if the man does not what is the reason why why is the man in a hurry and why is she saying no maybe she has a reason for saying no because if she says she wants to build she can actually build with the man if if she's standing she can actually build with the man not until she have the whole world Except you're telling me she does not have anything at all, at all. She has, but she wants more. Then there is... To her, she has an auntie that once wanted to get married to a man. And she got a shop that she wanted to sell some stuff. And then this so-called husband of hers told her that, please don't bother about the shop. You can return the money for the shop. When we, when, once we get married, I'm going to open a shop for you and make things better and even buy you a car now finally they got married and this man never did any of that until today he hasn't done it so she's like i don't want to be a liability to any man i have my goals and i don't just want any man to maybe at the end of the day i become a housewife because she doesn't want to become a housewife so then that's her reasons that's why i was saying maybe she have her reasons that is her reason something has triggered that she knows something happened sometime that was not good, which was very wrong. She has her reasons then. Then let her tell the man her reasons. And if the man is not comfortable with it, fine. And if she's, she will be comfortable with the man walking away, fine. Please. Contribution. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In that, uh, in such matter, she needs counseling. So that is what we are going to do for her, refer her for counseling. Maybe there is something that happened that she's holding on to and she, she's afraid to make a step. Are you hearing me? Outside the um, family matter, her orientation. So it is better you refer her for counseling so that they can work on her mind. Are you satisfied? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, please, I want to add to what that lady said. She said something about the elder sister passed through the same thing. Now, what I'm trying to say, for me, I'll also say there's also a foundational problem there. Yes. Because the sister cannot pass through the same thing the elder sister is passing through. So for me, I think, number one, they need a, spirit, a spiritual counseling. Because the elder sister said, I don't want to get married now. I need to take care of myself first. And the younger sister said the same thing. So I feel there's a particular foundation fighting, making them make such decision. Amen. 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 That is also a concern for that family. Being that it happens to the auntie, the elder sister, and her then it's becoming a pattern in the family. That's where the counseling comes in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's this friend of mine that had an issue, and the issue is 
she was brought up by her mom. And at a point, uh, there was this man her mom was dating. And the mom left the man because, according to her, the man was a womanizer. So she doesn't just know how it is because her mom doesn't want to tell her the real truth. So sometimes she'll say, you are the daughter of this other person that you grew up with. And at the point, the other man came and she still told the daughter that this other man is your father. Now, the two the fathers now are late. The other father, I believe because of, um, will I say, the man is an ethnic man and the woman is also an ethnic woman. And whereas the other father who later came is from the Northern Cross River. So in this case, you know, there is this thing about um, ethic and people that they say, okay, at times, and they're like, ah, oh, what time, Kedi? Oh, he's an ethic person. No, let me do it because he's my ethic person. So this lady now is now trying to think, oh, maybe the mother actually wants her to be a name for this other person because she feels that this is the real, as in their ethics, and she doesn't want to associate anything with the other person. Then come to think of it, this daughter of hers resemble the person who is from Norton Cross River. Now, the person who is from Norton, the father who is from Norton Cross River has money. Whereas this other family is a royal home, but no money. And this other family from the thick, they are much of, as in, witchcraft So, <laughs> to her, she doesn't know what to do. Because if marriage should come to her, the other family of the, of the late man who is from that time, they know her very well to be the daughter of that man. And this other family knows her to be the daughter of that man. In this aspect, if marriage comes to her, is she going to do because she has been asking it and she's confused. Praise the Lord. That is a very big confusion. The mother is confusing her foundation. Because as it is, she does not even know her foundation. She does not know where she truly belongs. She, you have, the, that, girl, that girl has to talk to the mother because the mother must truly tell her the truth. She has to really tell her the truth. Then there was a discussion we were having at a point. She was like, after all, when Adam and Eve were created, there was nothing like bright price. <laughs> and since there was nothing like bright price, God made the both of them meet up to the expectation of being husband and wife. Then what happens to those who are in orphanage? Who don't, they don't grow up to know their father and their mother because there's this thing people say about tradition. Uh, if a child does not get married to this family, maybe she may end up not getting married and she may end up not having any child for the man that, this, that, that they were supposed to pay bride price to the actual family. That tradition will take its course, it will affect. I don't know, Mama, if you're getting me. That is the orphanage, as in children in orphanage, they, are, they don't know their real parents for their bride price to be paid but they still get married and live happily with children. Whereas, this other one that at least gets to know the two families now, maybe tends to get married, or they, they get to pay the bride price into the wrong family, and it might like kind of affect her in her marriage tomorrow. Definitely. The truth is, you said the both family knows this girl. Yes. That's to say she associated with the two families. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that's more, com that's enough confusion now she's bringing confusion upon confusion then her mother is endangering her life the mother really have to tell her the truth the mother have to stand for what is the truth because if marriage comes now and bread price is to be paid and if it is paid to the wrong place you know the other people won't accept it and you wouldn't really know now you say these other people are full of witchcraft and you know what happened in most cases there is a case i heard of recent there is a brother he was in one church very committed to that church he got married there from the Anang. He got married to a, a sister. Okay, he was from Ibiona. Then the sister was from Anang. They got married. And when it was time, they just handled it like that. The man did not even go to tell his people. That's his real parents. He didn't go to his village. He just did it here, like that, like that. Then the girl now took the man. The man paid the bride price to the wrong person, according to what I heard in their village. He paid the right place to the wrong person. And guess what? They married two years ago, and the man is in the mortuary right now as we are talking as a result of this thing. You know why? Most of those people, because they are aware of what happened, most of them, they are diabolic. So they will rise up. We were talking about evil people. They, they know the ordinances to carry it out. Like in the, 
Arnang, Akwaibom, and all that. They are places that they don't even need to do much things. All they do is just maybe carry wine, very small drink, pour on the ground, carry out the en enchantment and all that. And before you know, as you're going, the thing is following you. Except as a real child of God who knows you're right. But as a child of God who knows you're right, you must do things rightly too. So let your, their mother, see, let her sit her mother down and let her mother really tell her the truth unless she wants to kill her. Praise the Lord. Or she wants to destroy her life. Praise the Lord. Any contribution? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, please, I want to correct an impression. Adam paid his bride price. And all the fathers of our faith, they paid their bride price. Starting from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When a man wants to marry a woman, he gives a substance, something that cost him something. In the case of Adam, he gave his rib. It was in the exchange of the rib that God now handed over the woman to him. To him, rather, yes. So don't let anybody say, who did Adam pay bride price to? If the person say that, the person doesn't know what he's talking about. And please, ma, you talked about covenant, evil veil, and the rest of the things. I want to ask this question. How do we classify this set of persons? Um, how do we classify this set of persons that they don't have attraction for single to single like them? A young man being attracted to a young lady, a young lady not being attracted to a man, rather they are being attracted to a married man, a married woman. Is it covenant? Is it evil veil? Please, help us, man. Praise the Lord. That's a good one. Uh, we talk about covenants. You know, when we talk about covenants, covenant can be personal. Covenants can be communal. A personal covenant is a covenant you, consciously or unconsciously, there are people who had entered into covenants because of their acts and their doings, and it becomes a pattern in their lives. Praise the Lord. There are young women that are attracted to married men. Why? Because they feel that the opposite sex that is their peers does not have anything to offer. So at that, they are not attracted to that person. They just think the married man will take care of me and will not give me much problem. As in, will not monitor me, will not disturb me with all those kind of things, you understand. So most women, that's their reasons why they don't want all those stress. They want to feel free and do their thing. They want to just live their life. They want money. They want, some of them are in short, they don't know what is called love. Love is not in their dictionary. So they believe that a young guy of your pay, what you're, bring, you're coming with is love. And they don't want love. They want money and care. So. <laughs> okay. In, my, in, in a way, it might be covered. At that, at first instance, there's how you can play into that and you think it's fun. But before you know, you keep going on like that and it becomes a pattern in your life which turns to be a covenant. That is a personal covenant. Covenant too can be communal. What is communal? Communal covenants are those covenants entered by your community, your village, as in your community, your state, nation, and all that. So those things affect people in a way. You can hear somebody say, people from this tribe, they behave like this. People from this tribe, they don't stay in a man's house. People from this tribe, they are they prostitutes. People from this tribe, they are thieves. People from this tribe, they do this and that. It might not actually be everybody, but they will generalize it because it's the majority of the people around that side that does those things. Praise the Lord. So it might be covenant. It might be faulty foundation as well. It might even be evil veil upon them that is misinterpreting things in their, on, into, into them. So they misunderstand things. They will see the right thing. They will run away from it and go for the wrong thing. Things that catch their fancy is things that does not even hold water. They might just go for that man, but that man does not have anything for them. It's just the money, care, whatever, but they are not important. They are not that important as they think. But they might be looking. Some years back, there's a friend when we were in secondary school. She, she, her name is Imo. So when I went to do admission for my son in Unical that time, I saw her. She works with Unical. She told me one day. When I saw her, we just said, is this your son? I said, yes. She said, is this your daughter? I said, you said, oh, Winifred, till now, 
I am not married. I have no child. Oh, I use my, I, I, I don't, I mean, don't carry my husband, do boyfriend pass. You understand? What does she mean? She saw her husband. Perhaps he didn't have what it takes then, but she did not look at the prospects. She didn't look at the future. She didn't know that, they were, that that man has contents. She didn't know that that man was large and thick. So she now looked at the present situation and condition and overlook the other side and then walk away. Only for her to realize much later that she used her husband. She, she did not carry her husband, do boyfriend pass. And until now, she's still yet to be settled. No child and all that. So most of the mistakes, there are times that it might be covenants too. It might be faulty foundation. Faulty foundation can misinterpret things for you. It makes you think offline, off point. You might see your breakthrough like this. You look at it and say, I beg. I don't want it. But it's truly your breakthrough. But you don't want it. Only for you to realize later that you made a mistake. Praise the Lord. So maybe that is what is playing out there. Pastor Jasper, are you... You're okay. Please, any other question? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me also contribute in that aspect. But before the end, the that, um, you are talking about our advice, let her meet her mother. Hmm? I'm, I'll persuade her mother very well. Let her mother tell her the truth. Why? Because it may affect her in the future. Of recent, I heard that couples, after 10 years of marriage, they now realize that they are siblings. Yes, it happens. It happens. Even in my presence in Ajegule, it, has, it happens. They came to pay visits. And while they came there, the same company, they found out that their parents are what? Um, brother and sister. So it happens. So let her go to the mother. Persuade the mother very well so that things like this will not happen to her. Then the aspect of the one Jasper asks, Pastor Jasper, Sometimes it may be lost. Youngest nowadays, they don't get attracted. Why? Because a man there has a money that they want from that man. So it may be lost. That's Praise what the Lord. Now. Contribution. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I've had an experience with someone who had almost think, four different men. The first man, the first man that came to her was a married man. She got to discover it. The second man that came to her was also a married man. After, the, after findings, she got to discover that. The third man again that, she, that came to her also for marriage, for, marry, for marriage was also a married man. And the fourth man, now, such, like, like what Jasper was asking now, it could be when she traced her background, her foundation, she discovered that, of course, she came from her, 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 her four parents were actually polygamy. She, she married from a, she, she, she's from, uh, she's from, a, um, from a polygamous family. Praise God. So, when you have a pattern, when you have, when you are, when you, when you are, when your background, your, your, your background, your parents, or you are born from a polygamous family, and you don't want to follow that pattern anymore, of course, you, if you don't break the pattern, it will keep occurring. So that is a sign of, of someone that has that have actually have a background of a polygamy. Praise God. So Hallelujah. it could be polygamous. So we are talking about covenant or whether, or whether it's covenant or whatever. It's, the truth matter is that it is it's a pattern that must be addressed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, Ma, I want to ask a question. Is there any way we can skip terms and condition? Like skip dating and enter marriage? Terms and condition? Is it right to skip like terms and condition? Like skipping dating and going into marriage? Is it right? Okay, if it's right for some, if someone comes to marry and you give the person terms and condition. No, you don't understand me, Ma. Like we solve the net, we see terms and condition. We do skip it. So, I'm putting it this way. Is it right to skip dating and enter marriage? Yeah, to skip dates. Skip, skip dating skip and dating. enter into Is marriage. Is it right to skip dating and, and enter, into, enter marriage. into marriage? Yeah. Well, I think it's not right. Why I'm saying it's not right? 
Why, in my own way, I'm saying it's not right is because at the point of dating, you come to really know who you are getting married to. Yes, yes, yes. You can see somebody just like that and get married to that person only to go and really realize that person in the home and it will bring problem. But at the point of dating, as in at the point of, in, in, in Christian, we call it courting. At the point of courtship, you get to know the person better. You know the person likes, you know the do's and don'ts of that person and the person knows your own too. You understand? Uh -huh. That's how you now decide what goes on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, I want to comment on the question of, I don't know my father. My mother don't want, doesn't want to tell me. Please, I think the ladies of age for DNA test. They are late. There's somebody, the, the lineage of that family. If she is from family A, the blood will tell you you are from family A. Except the doctors also want to join in the case. Because I don't understand why the mother will be quiet. The mother is looking at what will, she will gain, not what the daughter will gain. So the daughter has to stand up, both in prayer and in physical work, to be able to ascertain who the father is. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Ma, please, I want to ask this question because uh, there is a strong contention currently. I have a friend of mine who actually wants to get married. There is this girl he has been dating since he came to serve here in Cross River State. So they actually met in a living church like this. And since after that, they've started dating. Though this girl family's church is actually a white garment church. And as the case may be, currently, the young lady is pregnant and he intends getting married to her. But him himself, why he actually brought this question to me is because uh, I too, sometime in my life, I was birthed into a white garment church. So we left about 20 years ago. Because it was during our conversation, I told him and he told me his own part. I came out Otherwood, why he came out from Celestia. So, there is actually a contention right now that the young lady, she has actually finished her service and she has established herself so much in Calabar. And most of the people she has known all her lives has been here in Calabar than where her parents are. But here's the case now. She wants them to go back to their family church to do this wedding, which is a white garment church. And the guy is not cool. Because why? He's saying he cannot see himself going into a white garment church all over again to start holding any marriage, any wedding there. So it's actually a strong contention currently because he's even having in mind to probably cut off the marriage plan because the girl on her own side does not want to accept that fact that let's marry here in her own church we met herself. So Ma, in this case, please, what would you advise this young man? To? Praise the Lord. Amos 3, 3 says, can two work together except they agree? There's no agreement there then are you sure that marriage, even after, even if the guy follows her to the white garment church and everything is done, there will be issues in that marriage. How will a guy who is from a living church follow the girl to the white garment church to establish a covenant he does not understand? He will have battles to fight. Praise the Lord. So let him stand for what he believes. He is truly a believer and he knows his right in godliness. Then he has to stand for what he believes. If she is not comfortable with it, 
perhaps maybe she has her reasons, then I don't think it worth it. Praise the Lord. Are you okay? Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Mama, my second question goes this way. We, we know that um, traditional marriage is actually the marriage here in Africa. Then the white wedding is actually the marriage of the white. So I would like to say, if as a person, you have money to get married, is it actually necessary for you to do the two, wait, the two ceremony, knowing very well that it's still the same thing? Traditional marriage, I believe that very day of traditional marriage, prayer is still made to God. What's still the extent of doing white wedding? Listen to the name white wedding. That is to say, white. That is the white man tradition which we adopted from them. Praise the Lord. Uh, that question is thick and deep. I will give my own, I will tell you my own way and I know that Father will conclude it because it's deep. For me, Traditional marriage is the basis of every marriage and it is a must do because it has to do with the parents of the girl. It has to be with the rights of the parents. And that one is the must do. Then, as a Christian, as a child of God, a believer in God, it's like, I, to me, it's like you cooking food and you just scoop it without blessing it and you eat it. So, to me, white wedding is the blessing of your marriage. You're coming to hand it over to God. You're coming to entrust your marriage into the hands of God. To tell God to take over your marriage. You're coming to let, tell, in short, to hand it over all. Let God have his way in that marriage. Praise the Lord. Contribution. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, for the white wedding issue, it's not until you do an elaborate thing. Yes. Because by right, after traditional marriage, you have to bless your wedding in the oh church. Yeah. You can decide to call even if you're both families, like 10, 10 per family, and gather. You still do your white wedding. It's not until you do. If you have capacity, you can host the whole of Nigeria. But it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not that you have to do it the way you want it. Even if it's in the vestry, you can go and bless your marriage and you will go. Provided the traditional marriage is done. But you need to bless your marriage in church. It's a must. Oh, yes. So, young woman, are you okay? You're still not okay. And if you are not satisfied, please, my father, please, can you help us out? Okay. Um, young woman, if you think you're not satisfied with that contribution and what I have said, can you tell us why? Okay. Leave it for now. One more okay, one more question, please. So that Father will take over. Oh, okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, this question is very intense. Um, please, let's hear you loud. Oh, sorry. This question is very intense. I'm talking about um, what this guy said. If dating is is permitted to for people to date before entering into marriage and i want to ask a question i have a friend that is seriously complaining right now about what happened she she didn't really cut her man when i mean cutting they didn't do they didn't have sex when they were cutting sorry for using that word i hope i'm permitted they didn't have sex so now she's having issues they they cut it, yes, but they did not have sex and all that. And now she's saying that she's not being satisfied sexually and she's not desiring her husband anymore. So I don't know how to help that kind of a person because she keeps complaining all the time because they did not have sex and they were not permitted to have sex because they are Christian. So I want to know if, Praise how to help such a person. Thank you. Well, <laughs> Praise the Lord. When we, talk, <laughs> when we talk of, when they said courtship, were you talking of courtship or sexual activity in the relationship? Courtship is, though, courtship is a little different from what you're talking. 
Courtship is a time of coming together. Man, they were together, but they were not having sex. What do you say? They were together, cutting, but they were not having okay, sex. Okay, they courted. Yeah, uh -huh, they courted, but they were not having sex. Sex, okay. So they got married. And, and he says, she and, says. And now, she didn't, like, they didn't have sex before marriage. So after marriage, they're not having sex, but she's saying she's not having it. She's not enjoying whatever she's having with the husband so at that so at that she needs help and she doesn't know how to go about it because she's not desiring her she has to desire her husband yes, sure she was married yes, sir. properly married legally married she have to enjoy her husband the way he is Contribution. Praise the Lord. Please, after that, no more question. No more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. In that case, uh, I must say they both have to work on it. It's very simple. Yes. It's very simple. They just have to work on it. She should tell the man how she wants to get her pleasure. And with that, this case won't be an issue anymore. Thank you. Please, may we be upstanding as we welcome Father. Put your hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, uh, take your seat briefly. Are you blessed? Okay. Now, let's start. One, you will attribute, let's start from this last question. You will uh, attribute it to the counseling. Because you are supposed to have counseling before marriage. We do it here. And one of the topics in the teaching is sex in marriage. It is an art to be learned. But many don't learn it. No. It must be learned. So you won't just jump into marriage. She cannot say she wants to opt out of the marriage because she's not enjoying her sexual life. She's not having affection towards the man. It's the fault of the man. It's also her own fault. You must learn it. Just like you said here, uh, I'm sorry you apologized for using the word if you are wrong sex. In church, when I say church, I mean the body of Christ. We are ashamed to teach this. And it's very vital. That's why you see a lot of things are happening in marriages. There's a story, there's not even a story, there's a case I handled. The woman found herself when she had a challenge with the man. And the man drove her out of the house. She got married as a virgin. So... Each time the, the man comes in is, open your leg, I enter, and come out. That's the end. Suddenly, she was going to the bank. She ran into a banker that also had a challenge. And both of them finally met. And had sex together. When they were trying to reconcile the man, the lady, back to the original husband, she said, I know they go. I never knew that sex is sweet like this. <laughs> when you are, you see, that is where knowledge comes to play. Because even some of you, you are already feeling shy the way you are looking. No, no, no. You mo if you want to be married, listen to is a core area you must study. Yes, 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 yes. You study it. The art of sex is what must be studied.
there is this uh, experiment that was carried out. I want to believe that maybe some of you have run into that video. A situation where the a cock was put in the midst of hen within within 15 minutes that uh, had heavy encounters with almost uh, all the hen. Uh -huh. So, and when they now put the same cock with one hen, just one round, it got tired and refused to go back. Why? Men loves variety. What kind of variety? You can't be using one method in sex. No. There must be varieties. You must learn the varieties. So they have not learned it. That's why they are suffering it. It's both sided from the man, from the woman. Because the woman that is learned can teach the unlearned man. Abi. So there is no uh, uh, shyness inside of it. Praise the Lord. There's a case of a, a guy that husband and wife, they got married. Pastor. <laughs> so he disvirgin the lady, but didn't know how to disvirgin the lady. And the lady, till today, she's yet to recover from the infection. They are married. Though. So there is how to open the gate. There's how to close the gate. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. That's why the Bible says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Uh -huh. So there is, <laughs> there is a thanksgiving, there is worship, there is praise. Uh -huh. <laughs> praise the Lord. You, you, need, you need to learn it. So let them learn it. You can walk out. When you walk out and enter into another, a, an average man that doesn't know it wants sharp, sharp. Because a man is carried away by sight. So at any point in time, a man is ready for that. But not a woman. A woman has to be prepared. So but most men don't know that. Praise the Lord. So, well, have I addressed that question? I've addressed it. So, let them go for coaching, both of them. Let them go. There are marriage counselors. Uh -huh. So, let them go for, for that coaching. Praise the Lord. So that she can enjoy herself. Number two, the one she asked concerning traditional marriage. Now, please listen to this, oh. Traditional marriage is the core of the marriage. There are two marriages recognized by law. It will shock some of you to know that church marriage certificate is not recognized by law. It's not valid. Not valid. When you go to the court, you say you want to divorce. Where's your certificate? They said, it's church owned. They said, there's nothing here to divorce. Make one they go separate ways. Why? The why is that the church marriage certificate, church wedding, is not recognized by law. The two marriages recognized by law is a traditional marriage and the court marriage. And listen, when you do traditional, you do court, uh, sorry, church wedding in the morning or court wedding in the morning and your dowry has not been paid and in the evening of the same day, they said they are celebrating Yes, that is traditional marriage. That's when your dowry is to be paid. The one you did in the morning is illegal. It's null and void. Hello? 
except your dowry, your bride price, they carry the bride price and pay it. This is one naira, the bride price. You know, bride price is different from dowry. So, for everyone that wants to be married, traditional marriage is their call. When you do your traditional marriage, listen very well, and there is a pastor there, the moment the pastor stands up to pronounce both of you as husband and wife and say he's blessed, it's just a blessing, oh, you are married, go home together. You don't need white wedding again. White wedding is ceremony. Pastor, why are you saying this? No, 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 I must tell you the truth. So that when you hear it anywhere, you, don't, you, you won't say, that pastor knows about anything. So I need to let you know. The moment you do your traditional marriage now, and there is a pastor that you invited, and he blesses that marriage, both of you go home. You don't need anything. All these, you wear white uh, gown, you wear suit. Those are all junk. They are ceremony. You know every mistake in America is a fashion in Nigeria. From Genesis to Revelation, did you hear anything about wedding? That they were, the moment they pay your dowry, they've carried you home. No, I want you to talk. Oh, you, can, you can disprove me here. Talk. If you, if you say it's not correct, Pastor, uh, you bring your, I will give you from Genesis, I will tell you to your Revelation. Let's leave Old Testament. Let's just say it's Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus was present in chapter 2 of John. They invited him where he turned water into wine. Did you hear anything that there was a priest there that blessed the marriage? Huh? May we talk now? So all this one bridal train from here to Bogobri. <laughs> you wear, thank you, sir. You now wear a shabby. <laughs> you now wear a shabby. The shabby is like uh, this thing. Peacock. Uh, where is it written? You see, you are the one putting yoke on yourself. You are the one putting weight on yourself. All those things are ceremony. See, if, you know, buy, if he doesn't buy a week of 500,000 for me, in fact, I know go, mm -mm. So they now, they didn't paint their faces those days. They just went to their parents, paid, and carried them. Now they must dress you. You use almost a day to, do, to paint your face. I think they make up. And it has made us to prepare more for wedding than marriage. Wedding is only a deal. Marriage is forever. That's why you see marriages crashing. Because people go into marriage preparing for only wedding. They don't prepare for marriage. Now, you go to school. You study four years. For what you will retire in 35 years, Abby, either you are 60 or you are 35, you retire. What about the one that even after your career retirement, you are still in the house with the person? People don't study it. How many books do people read before they go into marriage? They don't read books. They just assume. My father, they use idea. How? That, that's where they end it. How my mother did it. How my father did it. And if it wasn't correct, what do you do? So, have I addressed that now? So, they are free. Oh. Just you are free. You can give a letter to the church. Tell the church, this is my marriage. I want a pastor to come and bless it. That's the end. Anything they will eat, they eat there in the traditional celebrate. Una go. If you need the church certificate, you mustn't come here to stand before they pronounce. If you said you need church certificate there, 
they will give you. You will be given just to fulfill all righteousness. That's why here we give two certificates. Since the ministry is fully incorporated, we also, we have also been fully registered, licensed to give court. So when you see us give the other certificate, that is your court marriage. That's court. So that's why you see during weddings, we give out two certificates. One is court. The court registrar, the marriage registrar, Calabar South, local government, comes in by reason of our relationship. She normally comes here to sign it for the intending couples. Because when you finish, when you finish, we will return one to them. You keep one. The church keeps a copy. Then there's something like a passport. You fill it in. You fill the other scratch card. You scratch it. You register it. You go to, I think it's First Bank or so. You pay to the marriage registry in Nigeria so that you garbage in your, your information. Anywhere in the world, when they say, are you married? You say, yes. You go to embassy. You go to anything. All they need to do is just to type your name. But it comes out there worldwide. So that's the basic thing. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think, is there any other question that was not addressed? Let's assume today is for question and talk. Tomorrow we'll go into ministration. I don't want to keep you now. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow we'll pray, we'll break yokes, the things they mentioned here, we'll carry them out. Hallelujah. Then concerning the other, what do you call it? They, there are people when you see your life that your life is only attracting, there are some. <laughs> I've had that. There's one, was it last year, year before last in my office? The lady came in that the only people proposing to her are old, old men. In their not even 50s, late 50s, but 60s. In their 60s, 70s, I say, ah, oh, God. <laughs> so, the moment I said, in the name of Jesus, if you hear the voice speaking through her like the sound of a trumpet, said, I made her look whole. So that all old, old people are the ones to be attracted to her. I took away her glory. So there are situations like that whereby people are attracted. There are covenants that attract old people. There's another one I answer. I handled that one too. It was a married. All the people proposing, coming, is married people. Praise the Lord. Don't go near married people leave their homes. There's a case, two cases on ground. Do God has helped me to settle one. A woman left her husband. Why? Because the husband has a side chick. As she began to toil for the children, two of them she had. One male, one female. In the process, she herself, things became rough. She went and got hooked up with a wealthy married man. So trouble came. <laughs> now, what made her leave her marriage? Now she has become what? A side chick to another marriage. Breaking the marriage. They brought the case to me here. So anything that has to do with married people, do what? Avoid them. Whatsoever you don't want to happen in your own marriage, you to do what? Don't sow that seed. 
it's not only women. No. There are men that, when you see a young guy going after married people, he's a lazy person. You see a young guy going after married women, he's a lazy person. Why is he lazy? He's dodging responsibilities. I've seen them. I've met them. In fact, two weeks ago, there's one I stood outside there. I was addressing him. He said, young, young girls, they look for money. So let him just impregnate somebody and carry belay for him. Let him be. You can imagine that mentality. Praise the Lord. So tomorrow, we will, now we've handled the mental side. Tomorrow, let's do what? Handle the spiritual side. You know there's a challenge in your family as you are coming. Carry that mindset. We'll be breaking those yokes. Please, can you give me message translation? Let me show us for tomorrow when you are coming. Now, Ruth chapter 3 from verse 1. Good news says, Sometime later, Naomi said to Ruth, I must find a husband for you so that you will have a home of your own. Verse 3. So wash yourself, put on some perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Get dressed in your best clothes. So tomorrow, we will put on perfume. So put on your best clothes where you are coming. Praise the Lord. Easy to read version says, Then Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, maybe I should find a husband and a good home for you. That will be good for you. Go wash yourself and get dressed. Put on a nice dress. A nice dress. Praise the Lord. Now, Living Translation says, Living Bible says, One day Naomi said to Ruth, My dear, isn't it time that I try to find a husband for you and get you happily married again? Verse 3. Now, do what I tell you. Bath and put on some perfume and nice clothes. King James says, Wash yourself, anoint yourself. I tell you now, now do as I tell you, take a bath and put on some perfume and dress in your nicest clothes. Now give us King James, please, of that verse. Wash thyself, therefore, and what? Anoint thee and put on what? Raiment. Now, can you give us uh, Esther chapter 2, verse, I think verse 12. Check Esther 2, 12. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go into the king of Hasiris, after that she had been 12 months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit, six months with what? Oil of men. And six months with what? Sweet odors. That's perfume. Oil. Perfume. So we'll be engaging those two mysteries. If you have perfume, bring it. We we'll pray for it. You pray over it. You use it for yourselves. If you have perfume, you have body spray. Which of them? You have the two. Bring them. We'll anoint you here. If you want to come with your oil, come with your oil. So tomorrow, we are dealing with it more spiritual. If I stretch us now that I will start ministering to you, we won't live here now. Praise the Lord. So I want us to go get ourselves prepared for tomorrow. So that we are here. Now that we have addressed certain issues, tomorrow we come in to do the main domain. Tell somebody by your side, come early tomorrow. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your voice and give him thanks. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise that he deserves. Return all adoration. Return all the praise. Return all glory to him. We thank you, Jesus. I'm not hearing your voice. Lift up your voice and say something to him. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. 
My bank a lot knock back am. My check you know the bounce. My bank a lot knock back am. My check you know the bounce. My bank a lot knock back am. Hold your phones. My check you know the bounce. My bank a lot knock back am. My check you know the bounce. I I. Your mama say, say not me, they come for you. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Yogoko, 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 Today, a lot enters your phone. Every financial pressure, every financial shame is wiped out in the name of Jesus. Wherever they've forgotten you, I command supernatural remembrance. Let a lot that will make you dance all through the remaining days of this year. Let such a lot enter your phone. Let such a lot enter your phone. Whatsoever has removed your name, your picture, your thoughts in the hearts of your helpers, today, let that evil be wiped out. Let your helpers remember you for good. Can I pray one prayer for you? Any of you that is in a wrong relationship, by fire I disconnect you. Can I pray the second one? As you disconnect, I connect you with the right one. You know, like uh, the question he asked, please know, it is better you don't go to a wrong place to be married. Somebody got married in the shrine. They wedded them, married them in the shrine. They came here for the destruction of that evil and it was destroyed. So, as long as can two walk together, I say they be agreed. No. Tell the, make you, they go. I know one time. You tell him to disconnect forever. Praise the Lord. It is better not to waste time with a time waster. It's better to stay alone, no? When you are in a relationship, one year, two years, three years, four years, I don't believe in all those long courtship, long engagement. Are you hearing me? I don't believe in it. And most times, it, it affects the women. Why? If you check two people, male, female, that are of the same age, if you check properly, you will see, notice that after some time, the woman will look a little older than the man. 
Is it correct? You don't have the same timetable. So you run at the speed of light. Now, the other one, they say the, he, she, the, the man proposed to her. It was the same thing that happened to the sister. Some of you don't know what you are looking for. Don't enter relationship just because of love. Be purpose motivated. Can you marry a uniform personnel? Can you be married to a doctor? Can you be married? You know that he will have duty. They can call him to be on duty. Likewise, uniform personnel, both military and par paramilitary. Will you? You check. Can you? Can you flow with the person? Who are you created to be as a woman? That's the question you ask yourself. So that when somebody's coming to propose to you, you don't go and become a burden to that person. I've seen men who got married to ladies, they refuse to support their vision. They say, no, 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 no. It's not true. The woman's vision must also be supported so that you grow together. I don't believe in housewife. That era had passed. No. Tomorrow, maybe I will just tell you a few signs. Danger, danger signs for you to, red flags for you to, you know that this one is a red flag. You stay off. Praise the Lord. So please, I, I want to charge you very well. Don't make that mistake. Discover who you are supposed to. Don't just fall into a man's hand because he's proposing to you. No. Can you flow together? Can you marry a class teacher, a classroom teacher? Can you marry a lecturer? Can you marry a politician or be married to a politician? You check those things. You know which one. It's not, no, 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 the guy has money. It's not about the money. Because when you enter into the marriage, you will know that marriage is beyond money. Money doesn't bring joy. It only brings happiness. Ex happiness has an expiry date. But joy, whether you eat or not, the joy is there. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He said, look before you leap. So check before you dive in. You should check. So that you won't be, now that you are praying for a good man, faithful man, you give all the description, a good woman, a good uh, a, a virtuous woman. You too, the Bible says, a virtuous woman who can find. The same Bible says, a faithful man who can what? Who can find. So it's both sided. If you want something good, you too look good. Abby, like biggest like. He said, wash yourself. Wear your best clothes. That's to say, if you want the best man, you two be the best. If you want the best woman, you two be what? Be the best. Today, people give headache. Man giving headache to the woman. Woman giving headache to the man. It mustn't be. Praise the Lord. I decree. Every lost profitable relationship, I command supernatural restoration. Every wrong relationship, I command disconnection. Right relationship, I command supernatural connections. Amen. I speak to your feet. Let your feet connect you with the right people. Amen. Let your feet connect you with the right spouse. Amen. Whosoever God has ordained for you, in the name that is above every other name, let there be divine connections. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. You won't lack what to eat. Yes. You won't lack what to wear. Yes. In Jesus' name.